Hey all, I'm Adarsh Rai. I'm over here to present this wonderful series in front of you, Master the Topic. So here we are again with this brand new topic and the topic's name is Collision of Projectile. So what all things we are going to cover today is we'll be talking about projectile motion, we'll be talking about relative motion, we'll be using it to finally create a condition of collision. Then we'll be also talking about the time after which bodies in motion will collide. And then finally by the end of this lecture I'll be giving you a very quick trick through which you can finally tell whether two balls, two projectiles will collide in mid-air or not. So to begin with, let us analyze a game of dartboard in front of us. So the dartboard is basically a game of focus and stability. So here comes the board, here comes the darts. Now we are here to increase the level of difficulty in it. So the board now will not be in static condition and it will have a motion. And the player has to aim for the bullseye, he'll be given three attempts. So the first attempt, as you can see, it got missed. The second attempt, it again got missed. And the third attempt, he was finally able to hit the bullseye. But how he did it in his third attempt? Do you people know? So now to understand how the dart player was finally able to hit the perfect position in its third attempt, what we need to do, we need to bring two balls into action. Take the sample case of two balls. Now let's say there are two balls with velocity VA and VB and they are colliding somewhere in air at this position. So how to actually solve the question? How to create a condition for this? That how to tell people that okay, V and VB will be this much in that, this direction, then we can finally claim that yes, they will collide in air or not. So for that, what I'll be doing, I'll be using the concept of relative motion. And relative motion, just see on yourself how easy the games turn out to be now. So what I'll be doing, I'll be placing myself in any one of the ball's frame. So I'll be placing myself in ball A or ball B and then observing the other ball. So in doing so, let's say suppose I have placed myself in ball A. So on placing myself in ball A, I become at rest. I am now not in motion. So entire motion will be performed by ball B. And if it is finally colliding with me, right, then what should be the direction of its motion? It's quite simple. The direction of motion should be along the line joining both the balls. That is, velocity of B with respect to A, that is my frame, should be along the line joining AB. That's pretty simple, right? And that should be the case. Then only I can say that yes, ball B has finally had a collision with me, right? So what I need to find, I just need to hunt for velocity of ball B with respect to A. And how I can find that? That will be equal to velocity of B minus velocity of A. And these individual velocities are obviously from the frame of ground, right? So if VBG minus VAG vector, that is equal into VBA vector, if it is along the line joining AB, that is if VBA vector is along AB, then both balls will collide and this result is as simple as it is looking. So you just need to hunt for what? VBA and if VBA is along AB then you can surely claim that yes ball B will collide with ball A and this is the observation while we are placing ourselves in ball A's frame. On observing things from ground they will collide somewhere over like this. Okay, then what should be the time after which they should collide? What will be the time? So basically, if you consider this distance, this initial distance to be d, then there is no element of acceleration into it, right? So time will be distance upon speed. And what is the speed? So me being in frame A, me being in ball A, I am at rest. And only ball B is moving towards me with a velocity VBA. So the time I can easily state as that will be equal to d upon magnitude of VBA vector, that is the distance divided by its speed from my frame. 
and in such a manner I can finally claim here that yes, after this much time, the balls will collide and time remains same, right? So suppose I am now observing from ground. So I can say that yes, after some time, they both the balls will collide somewhere at this position, okay? So now using this concept, let us finally derive the condition for the two projectiles to collide in air. So here are two projectiles given to us. This is projectile A, projectile B with velocity VA and VB, making an angle theta A, theta B with the horizontal. So what can be the condition over here? The case remains same. What we are going to do is, we'll be placing ourselves in any one of the ball's frame. So now I'm placing myself in ball A. In ball A's frame, I'll be observing the motion of ball B. So what should be the motion of ball B such that both of these balls collide somewhere over here? So the case remains same and ball B's velocity should be along the line joining both of these projectiles and then only I can claim that yes, this projectile will collide somewhere over here. And what about the distance? The element remains same. Let's say suppose this is the distance, then the time of collision will be d upon VBA magnitude. Okay. So this is one way. This is one way of finally finding whether both the balls will collide or not and how to find the time. There's were quicker approach to this. So the quicker approach is, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find the components of VA and components of VB. So the horizontal component of VA will be VA cos of theta i and the vertical component will be VA sine of theta i. What about B? So B will have a vertical component of VB sine of theta b and a horizontal component of vb cos of theta b. So again, I am doing the same result. I have placed myself in ball A's frame and uh, observing ball B. But that was the approach which was quite hectic. Sometimes the calculation or the vector analysis seems quite tricky. So over here, what I am going to do, I am just observing things from ground frame. And this is the trick is that if ball A has a vertical component of velocity that is Va sin theta i, equal to the vertical component of B's velocity that is VB sin theta B, then I can surely say that yes, both the balls will finally collide. So the quick trick approach over here is that if VA sin of theta A is equal to VB sin of theta B, then both balls will collide. Okay, and what about the time after which they will collide? So time remains same. So the horizontal displacement is done by VA cos theta and VB cos theta B. And so let's say this distance, this distance, they have considered it to be D. So the time of flight will be, this will be equal to D divided by velocity of B with respect to A's frame. And what will be the velocity of B with respect to A's frame along the horizontal? That will be equal to VB cos theta B plus VA cos theta A. Plus, so in such a manner, you can finally find what will be the time after which both these balls will finally collide at this point. So using this analysis, let's take the case of two planes which are flying at a very great height and uh, they just want to know the condition such that they collide in midair so that they can avoid such a situation. So what will be the condition over here is, See, suppose this is plane A and it has a velocity like this, V. And here it's plane B and it has a velocity over here, VB. And both of their paths are crossing at this position. So what is the condition that they collide somewhere over here, such that we can avoid such a situation, right? So the analysis remains same. What we need to do? We need to place ourselves in any one of the plane's frame. So now let's say we place ourselves in the frame of plane B. Okay, so now what we'll do, we'll observe the motion of plane A while sitting in plane B. So what we are going to find is, we'll be finding velocity of A with respect to B. And what that will be, it will be velocity of A vector from the frame of ground minus velocity of B vector from the frame of ground. And if this VAB vector is along the line joining both these planes, if it is along the line joining both these planes, 
then I can surely say that yes, they will collide somewhere over here after some time. So I just need to avoid that. I just need to avoid either, I just need to alter the velocity of B or the velocity of A in such a fashion that this condition is not maintained and in doing so, I can avoid their collision somewhere in midair. That's quite easy, right? So this was all the conceptual part, but this is not all. You need to practice questions based on collision. So what you're going to do? Go in the description box, get a link. From there, you can download Extra Marks, the learning app. In which, what you can do, you can practice hundreds of questions based on collision condition. Collision of projectiles, river man, rain man, relative motion problems. You can apply some filters and do as many questions as you like. After that, do test your skills. Give a test and analyze at what level you are. Okay, you can create your own test. You can practice mock test. You can also give trending tests. So in this way, you can finally come to a situation wherein collision conditions won't create a trouble to you people. So this was all from my end. I'm signing off. Thank you.